What is angering former members of the intelligence community about the recently released Pentagon UFO report? Not enough aliens. my fellow connoisseurs of all things strange, unusual, and fringy. We have a great story for you today. There is more reaction from that nine-page Pentagon UFO report recently released to Congress by the Pentagon. And if you haven't read that report yet, be sure to check out my last video for my thoughts on the report itself, linked down below. But this episode is going to focus on Christopher Mellon and his reaction to that report. Christopher Mellon, of course, was the Deputy Assistant Director of Defense for Intelligence for both President Clinton and George W. Bush. Of course, you probably already knew that. Those of us who follow edgy subjects get to know the intelligence community quite well. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. In either sense, this particular former intelligence official has a blog, and it can get pretty edgy, especially when it comes to the topic of UFOs. Not surprising, given that Mellon was one of the prime movers in getting momentum going on this issue, both in Congress and the general public, including his delivery of the Pentagon UFO videos to the New York Times back in December of 2017. And, like myself, Mellon doesn't understand all the negative reaction to the Pentagon UFO report by folks who wanted to hear that aliens built these strange objects that have been buzzing the Navy since 2004. In his most recent blog post entitled, The UAP Report and the UAP Issue, Mellon highlights a few things from the report that lends credence to the alien hypothesis, starting with a dismissal of the tendency to blame UAPs on foreign adversaries. Mellon writes, The report carefully states that some UAPs may be Russian or Chinese, although it plainly acknowledges there is no evidence of that. Notice, the report says only some. Given that military sightings of these bizarre craft have been occurring since the 1940s, it seems inconceivable the U.S., Russia, or China can account for the phenomenon in its entirety. I said almost exactly the same thing in my last video, so I suspect Mellon may indeed be a viewer of On the Edge. If so, welcome to the channel, Mr. Mellon, and thank you very much for watching. Mellon goes on to note the strange disconnect between the data found in the report and the report's ultimate conclusions. Quote, the raw data directly contradicts the report's findings. Do we take the testimony of the Navy personnel involved in the Nimitz case and others seriously or not? The glaring disconnect on this issue emerges during almost every press interview of those privy to the classified briefings or classified report. Mellon especially singles out a statement by Senator Mitt Romney, who recently expressed his thoughts on the Pentagon UFO report. Romney said in an interview on CNN, quote, They have a technology which is in a whole different sphere than anything we understand, and frankly, China and Russia just aren't there, and neither are we. So, the data is suggestive, and it isn't suggesting foreign adversaries, though for some people, that's still easier to believe. Mellon goes on to chastise the media in light of these findings for running with headlines downplaying the alien hypothesis, such as this one from the New York Times. Of such headlines, Mellon observes, quote, In my view, the UAP report's findings strengthen the case for the alien hypothesis by undermining the main alternatives and providing examples of capabilities we cannot emulate or even understand, precisely what one would expect if any of these reports involved genuine alien technology. A fair headline might have been, UAP report strengthens alien hypothesis. Good point there, Mr. Mellon. The fact that the alien hypothesis has not been ruled out and that foreign technology seems very unlikely does lend itself to some rather creative headlines. And while we're getting creative with headlines, here is my attempt at summing up uncomfortable truths in a catchy phrase. How about, Pentagon report doesn't say it's aliens, but it's aliens. That might be a little too honest for the media, but alas, it's what we're all really thinking. In either sense, Mellon gets to the point, quote, Aliens or not, we urgently need to know who is operating these mysterious and highly advanced vehicles in restricted airspace above American test ranges, carrier strike groups, military bases, and nuclear weapons facilities. We need to determine not only why, but how they are doing it. 
because some of the capabilities we are observing suggest revolutionary scientific insights and engineering capabilities that place America at a potentially huge strategic disadvantage, unquote. He continues, the authors of the report shaded the wording on this issue, but there is no mistaking the result if you speak to knowledgeable Department of Defense officials or listen carefully to those who have reviewed the data, unquote. Mellon also asserts that the media misses the fact that there are way more than the 144 cases of UAPs studied by the UAP task force. Quote, the press and public should know that these incidents are occurring far more often than the report suggests. Remember, the report does not include hundreds of thousands of civilian incidents or those by foreign nations. It does not list the thousands of reports that occurred between World War II and 2004, over 700 unsolved Blue Book cases. And of course, it cannot account for the incidents that were never reported due to the stigma surrounding the topic. Mellon then gives a detailed account of the now infamous 2004 Nimitz encounter and explains why no alternative to the alien hypothesis holds any water in light of the known facts of that case. He concludes, quote, Extraterrestrial technology was not discussed in the report because the issue was too politically sensitive, not because it is irrelevant. There was no proof presented of alien involvement, even at the classified level, but the dilemma remains unsolved, and the primary alternatives to the alien hypothesis are clearly diminished by the report. When will the press and our government begin taking the alien hypothesis seriously? Mellon concludes with this little gem. Indeed, in light of the facts presently available, how do we avert the conclusion that alien technology is the leading, perhaps only viable explanation? What theory can the skeptics or our government suggest that better fits the facts? That is a discussion worth having. It is indeed a discussion worth having, Mr. Mellon, or as popular astronomer and noted skeptic Neil deGrasse Tyson recently said on Joe Rogan's podcast, quote, all of what has been put forth as evidence for aliens to me is insufficient evidence to excite my interest in devoting time to finding it out, unquote. That's all right, Mr. Tyson. It can be rather scary when known facts contradict your stated beliefs. You scientists concentrate on the important stuff and leave UFOs to YouTubers like myself. Best to just stick your head back in the sand and focus on demoting planets like Pluto. Yes, don't think we forgot about your contributions to that cosmos-changing controversy. I, for one, still think we have nine planets in addition to a handful of still unexplained flying objects out there. I'm actually rather close-minded on that Pluto issue, but since I'm not a scientist, I'll entertain any evidence put forth on those inconvenient UFOs. I'm open to sensor glitches, birds, and foreign technology as an explanation but I'm also willing to listen to former high-level intelligence officials who have seen way more data than any of us and have walked away frightened by what they saw. And that's our story for today. I'm your host, Jay Jordan Hawk, and I'll see you next time on The Edge. If you like On The Edge, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And check out my three award-winning young adult novels, Puka Wiss the Outcast, A Scout is Brave, and Unwatchigi the Dreamer.